Well, I finally got a new camera, and I thought we would start things off just kind of get warmed up making videos again by taking a quick look at a soldering station that I recently picked up. Got it about a month ago. It's the Yeehaw 853D. It has hot air, soldering station, and it has a digitally controlled 5 amp 30 volt power supply built into it which is pretty nice. Um, Yeehaw makes a bunch of different ones of these. I think this is probably the, the highest end one they do. I paid $110 for it. I honestly just needed the hot air station, but when I started looking at it, um, I just think it made more sense because I got an extra power supply and uh, another soldering iron as well. Um, it also came with this hot air wand with a few different attachments that go on the end and then it came with the wonderful kind of cheap feeling uh, 907F um, I have a Heiko tip put on it right now, a chisel tip just because the tip that was on it was eh, kind of garbage um, and it came with this nice metal stand with this pretty cool little thing here has a metal sponge in it and then it's got rosin down at the bottom and it's really good for cleaning things off so I think what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and pop the top on this thing and we'll take a look inside see how the construction is it's nice and heavy it seems like it's pretty it's pretty well built and um, we'll see what the construction is like and then kind of turn things on and, and we'll take a look at the power supply see how how well it puts out power, how clean it is. Um, I'll show you how quickly the soldering iron heats up and some of the features that I think are pretty cool with it. So, uh, alright, let's get started. Alright, I'm going to start off by pulling all these screws out from around the outside. I think this lid just comes right off. I'm not going to record that because it's just me taking screws out. So, I'll be back when I've got the lid off. Alright, we got all the screws out. And the first sign of kind of meh engineering or putting together, I mean, this one screw was back here, and just a little sheet metal screw. All the rest of the screws are machine screws, so I don't know if they ran out or they just grabbed from the wrong basket, but oh well. Alright, let me get this lid off now. Should just come right off. Yep, lift right off. And we get our first look inside. I haven't had this lid off yet, so I don't know what we're going to find. Alright, so first look. We've got a transformer here that does 110 volts in 50 hertz. Interesting, since um, I'm in the United States, that's a 60 hertz, should be a 60 hertz supply. Uh, output 28, 32, and 11 volts. Now, I'm assuming this is going to be for the power supply. Um, this is a linear power supply, I'm pretty sure. I was kind of surprised. I was expecting it to be a switch mode power supply, but uh, pleasantly surprised with that. Over on the other side, I think we're seeing a much larger transformer. This is going to be for the um, the hot air and the soldering iron, I'm fairly certain. We'll take a look at some of the wiring here. I could be completely wrong. These could be switched around. Um, back here on the back, got uh, some transistors on an aluminum heat sink. There's a fan back there in the back. We've got a board up here. Um, I see right away we've got some nice little glue on all the, the connecting cables. Everything zip tied really nicely together. There are a lot of wires going all over the place, but from my initial reaction, it looks like this is fairly well put together. Let me get this flipped around. We'll take a look at the other side. All right, so we're looking at the larger of the two transformers here. Um, 110 volt. Now, this is a 60 hertz transformer. Outputs of zero. 10, 11, and 16 volts. This is the larger of the two transformers. If we look up here, I'm pretty sure this board is going to be the power supply board. Got a uh, Rubicon capacitor on there. Kind of surprised about that. I actually see Rubicons in the back there as well. Um, we can see here we've got a screw that isn't put all the way in. I don't know if that's just that they... Yeah, see, it's just loose. See, I don't... I don't like seeing... Oh, it's stripped. Okay, I'll have to come back and fix that. I'll get a bigger screw and put it in there. Um, our main 
input here. We've got the main switch, wires leading off of it, um, grounds are coming over to here where they are put down with a shake proof washer which is nice. Um, main power coming to the front board. There's a lot of wires in here guys and I, I'll be honest with you I'm not 100% certain what a lot of this stuff does but I can give you a kind of a good overview and um, can form your own opinions. I think so far things look pretty good. Um, we've got some uh, these connectors here the covering for them was pulled back and they're kind of loose I mean I guess they're okay but I think I'll also come in here and kind of put a little crimp on those and tighten those up you know it, it's what you would expect from from a Chinese um, piece of equipment a modern Chinese piece of equipment you're not gonna find you know something in here that looks absolutely disastrous but it's it's gonna need a little bit of work uh, most of these things they're not gonna work just right off the bat you gotta put a little effort into them and um, you know, give them a little bit of love all right so this is something, I don't know if you can see in there, but uh, down in there, there is a nut. It's just sort of stuck in there. And I think, I don't think it's connected to anything. I think I can just, yeah, it's it's glued in there. Um, I'll get a pair of tweezers and get that out of there. But, you know, it's the kind of stuff you really need to look for because um, if that gets, that falls out, rattles around, it could short on something and then you got problems. So that's, like I said, that's why we take these apart and look at them before we really get into using them because long term you can have some problems if you don't look and, and make sure that the uh, quality control is where it should be. All right, let me get that nut out of there and I'll get the lid back on after making sure there's nothing else crazy going on and um, we'll take a look at its functionality. All right, so you plug it in, and all the lights blink, nothing turns on. Um, I think I'm going to start out by showing you the functionality of the rework and of the soldering station, because honestly, the power supply is the most interesting thing to me. Um, I didn't expect there to be any issues with the rework station or the soldering station, and by and large, there aren't. Um, they're definitely not a Heiko station. Um, the Heiko station heats up quicker. It has more thermal mass on the soldering iron, and I trust its temperature a little bit more than I trust this one. However, I have used it. Um, I, I've, honestly, I primarily use the heat gun for uh, heat shrink tubing, which it works great for. I actually originally purchased it because I wanted to do some work on a phone that ended up not working out. So, All right, well, anyway, so let's go with the heat gun first. All right. We turn it on, we've got a temperature setting here. We can go, I think it goes down to, this isn't Fahrenheit, it goes down to a couple hundred degrees and it goes up to as plenty of hot as you want, I think 800 degrees. Um, nothing happens as far as the wand is concerned because it does have a sensor in it which keeps it turned off until you remove it from the, the cradle. As soon as you remove it from the cradle, this turns on and um, you can see from the temperature here, and I have checked, and it, it's fairly accurate. You can see the temperature rising, and it gets pretty hot pretty quick. Um, this is already hot enough to melt solder. Uh, I assure you it does melt solder. I've already done it. Um, down here, we have a fan speed control. Put that in there. Now, when I put that in there, you saw that it still stays on, but the, the uh, heater turns off which is a really nice feature. It cools things down. It, I think it stays on until it's about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, lets it cool off and, um, you know, it, it gets warm back here behind it, but I, I find that, you know, with it just sitting at about the distance from the wall as the back of the power supply is, the back of the unit is, just for cooling off purposes, it's, it's not really an issue um, with the heat getting back there. Uh, it also has a fan speed which goes, you know, from 1 to 8, which doesn't really mean anything, but I'll tell you, it's, it's a gentle breeze up to uh, a fairly stiff wind, and you've got a uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit button here to change between that for the soldering iron and the rework station. So we'll turn that off, and we'll turn the soldering iron on, and you'll see it's set at 750 right now, and you see how quickly it warms up.
And once again, not as fast as, as my Heiko, but it's quick enough. It makes a really good backup iron. And uh, temperature regulation is pretty good. Um, should be hot enough to melt some solder now. So, ta-da, melts solder, no surprise. It solders things. It, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that exciting about it. So, all right, let's move over to the power supply and uh, and see how that thing is. I'm gonna hook it up to the scope, and we'll hook it up to a load, and we'll see uh, what kind of regulation and um, accuracy this power supply has. All right, so test setup is I've got the power supply running through the fluke. Um, these are both calibrated, by the way, so you can trust what they have to say. Through the fluke, and then through a really crappy resistive load over here. Um, I've got a uh, electronic load that I'm going to be setting up pretty soon, so that'll actually be a future video. But for now, we're just going to have to live with... Uh, I'm not even going to show you what it is. Um, it, it's not good. And then we've got from the, uh, from the fluke going over to the 3478A. Uh, Fluke will show us uh, amperage, if I put it on the right place. Fluke will show us amperage. Uh, 3478 will show us voltage, and I will tell you what I've got going on here. So I'm going to turn down. Um, well, after we do this test, I'll show you how the current and voltage uh, work. It's kind of weird, but it works out okay. All right, on the power supply right now, I'm showing about 500 millivolts. It... Uh, it only has um, hundredths of a volt display and uh, 4.6 amps. So we're showing, you know, 432 millivolts here and, uh, you know, 4.6 amps, pretty close to there as well. So, um, yeah, I think that it's pretty accurate. So it's uh, certainly accurate enough for, um, for what I'll be using it for. So, all right, well, let me get the scope out and we'll take a look and uh, see how clean this power is it's putting out. All right, let me show you how this actually works. We've got the, the power supply turned on, and we've got coarse and fine for voltage and coarse and fine for current. Um, if we take the fines, put them up toward the middle, um, that way when we start turning up the courses, uh, we can fine adjust it. It's not my favorite way of, of things working, but it, it does work. So, you know, say we take the voltage, I uh, switched over to constant current mode now, take the current up, and we'll say we're going to do... Um, Let's say we want 5 volts. So we can't quite get there with this, so I can bring this down. Say, so, okay, we're around 5 volts and uh, about a half an amp. So um, that, uh, that's pretty good for the um, load I have here. But we'll be getting that fixed in, in the coming episodes. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. Um, okay, now let's get the scope on it. Alright guys, so the, this is where I'm going to go from kind of not knowing what I'm doing to really not knowing what I'm doing, but we give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Um, if you guys want to see something else or have a critique, which I'm, I hope you do because uh, there are people that know a lot more about this stuff than I do. I'm just really getting started in, in the electronics hobby. So, um, but anyway, that being said, five volts, half an amp. This is what I've got on the oscilloscope. Um, it's showing about 30 millivolts peak to peak of noise, maybe, I think. Uh, which sounds pretty good. I've seen some of the reviews on some other power supplies where the, uh, the uh, noise peak to peak was a lot more than that and uh, they seem fairly happy with theirs. So um, if we move up, whoops. Uh, okay, hang on a second now. All right, well, obviously I need more practice with the oscilloscope. But that being said, we'll just turn that off for now. And we'll go with maybe, I don't know, my final thoughts on this power supply, hot air gun, um, SMD rework gun, and soldering iron. I was like 110 bucks, I think I paid for it. You can get them around that price. Uh, you can get one that has a smaller power supply for less. Um, you can get ones that are only two function for a lot less. Is it worth it? I think so. Um, I I've used it quite a bit, um, honestly, primarily for doing heat shrink, but uh, I know the power supply will come in handy eventually. Um, I've also got this power supply, which I picked up, which I'm going to do a video on. It's uh, 
it's not working. Uh, it was sold as working, but so far it's not. So I got to pull that apart, and I think that'll be kind of interesting. And I've also got a few other things here to, to play around with. I've kind of been collecting uh, things to play with. Um, I've got, that's a 5 kV power supply there. I've got some precision stuff. I've got some uh, isolation transformer stuff I want to work on. Some old cell stuff. A uh, small mountain of China uh, Arduino stuff. And, uh, you know, just some things like that. So, um, it's going to be some pretty interesting stuff coming up. Um, hopefully, I'll learn as I go. And these, won't, these videos will be a little less... Uh, all over the place. <laughs> I'm also going to be setting up a computer here and uh, that is, I'm familiar with computers. I've been in the IT industry for 15 years so I'll be setting up a computer here and we'll be setting up logging. I picked up a serial to USB cable for use with the Fluke 45 back there which we'll talk about that another uh, episode. I got a really really good deal on that and um, some law you know maybe start doing some work with um, oh what's it called? with well I don't know it's the expensive software that everybody uses for doing electronics logging um, they've got a uh, a six month preview for it and um, I think I've got the ability to get some educational licensing for it as well through some family members so anyway okay well um, I hope you enjoyed this um, should you buy it maybe uh, it's it's in decent shape as with all this Chinese stuff, you know, obviously you got Rigel, you got HP, you got Fluke. You don't really need to worry about taking that stuff apart. But this Chinese stuff that you can plug into the wall and can possibly burn your house down, it's just always a good idea, even if you don't have a lot of knowledge in electronics, just like I don't, you can go in there and you can look and see, okay, there's a nut sitting, you know, glued to the side, or, uh, you know, the, this cable's falling off, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, of course, you can always get some help from someone else if, if you're not comfortable enough doing that yourself. So, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed making it, and I'll be making many more of these soon. All right, thanks. Bye.